Footy talk time for you Thursday. And as always, in studio, as I look across the table, I see my good mate, He Shaw. Yeah, Heater, you look a touch worse for wear. Yeah, well, um, I am, but these things happen. Um, <laughs> these things are a result of a big award to one of our good mates. Yeah, well, it only happens once in your life, I think, getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. It wasn't me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was Swanee, but... You know what? I don't think he will actually get invited back. I don't think he'll be allowed back. Every, all the old guys, you know what? Year on year, they keep coming back and they bring their their family, their friends every year. But I don't think Swanee will ever get invited back again. His speech was fantastic. Tell us a little bit about the night. Um, oh, it was one of the more boring nights you'll ever see um, <laughs> on the calendar. Very similar to the Brownlow. It's like, except the Brownlow, you know, or you don't know who's going to win. Mm. Well, you, you already know the outcome yeah. when you... But when you go to one of these things, you already know the outcome. So you're just actually waiting for Swanee. And like, I love hearing old stories from older guys, but we just, we were just waiting for Swanee and it was, um, yeah, it was, it was very fun. I think he's very much like he razzed up the crowd a bit because of the way he is and the way he goes about himself and he does it Swanee's way, as you know. I do know. And that is very, very much... Cruzy, like he even said he didn't even like his kids at one point. Um, <laughs> and he wasn't going to thank him because they wouldn't remember it. So um, the way Swanee is, I was sitting, I was actually sitting next to his old man and his mum. And it's funny, they were genuine. They didn't actually think that at any point that he was going to thank them. Um, and it wouldn't have even worried them one bit um, that he didn't. But he's lucky that he actually did thank Taylor at oh, the end, yes. um, which was good. But yeah. He's a different cat, Swanee. He did it his way, and I think he, he partied his way as well. His career is unbelievable. I think we forget a little bit about it because we were so up close and personal when it was happening, and you almost just take for granted how good of a player he was. Like, Swanee rocking up and had 30 to 40 and kick a goal or two was almost a given. That was like his trademark game. If he did anything on top of that, you go, geez, you've had a good one. Yeah, it's, it is weird because you talk about, like, the big and the, the best players going around. And their numbers. And Swanee's numbers are pretty much like a Gary Ablett Jr. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Swanee's are better than most of them. He's the Anzac Day medals, premiership. He says he should have won three Brownlows, only won one. Mm -hmm. um, and then he's best and fairest. Like it's not about individual awards, but if you're talking about individual awards, Swanee's done it all. Yes. Um, and some. So coming from a guy who was in his under 18 year who actually got dropped because. <laughs> From the call to cannons, is that yeah, where he was? Yeah, for, for misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. Like, he started early. Um, he got dropped from the call to cannons and then had three of the best games he's ever had in the final series, won a premiership, and that's pretty much how he got drafted. It's a, a pretty good effort to, to play the amount of games he did and now be in the Hall of Fame with, like, you can't even put Dane Swan with, like, Jason Dunstall. Tony Lockett, but he's actually in there with those guys. It's yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. He famously got drafted, didn't answer the phone, went to schoolies, said I've got schoolies booked, I'll come back to preseason on Tuesday. Yeah, he set the standard early. <laughs> um, I think, and the funny thing was seeing even seeing Mick the other night, he Mick, and you would know this better than most, Mick enjoys a bit of a, a lad, a bit of a larrikin. Yep. And I think he saw that in Swanee knowing that his, his old man was obviously a superstar playing at Williamstown. But Mick saw that in him and obviously gave him a couple of chances. But he actually, I think Mick, and we, we know Mick and we love him, he, he sees people like that and he knows if you're an actual deep down, you're a good person. And I think Swanee's obviously a very good footballer, but he's a good person. That's why he got his second and third chance. And then finally, finally made it. And from all reports, I had a pretty uh, decent after party. You finished up, yeah. I was well and truly on Thursday morning. I was a lot earlier than those boys, <laughs> um, but yeah. And, and Swanee said it during his speech. He goes, "The best thing about getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, he gets like mates from school, mates from when he was growing up, family, and then mates from now. They bring them all together, and he gets to have a, a good party." And um, I think the babysitter was staying for for a couple of days, so Swanee had a couple <laughs> She's of days up. His, yeah, <laughs> he had a couple of days up his sleeve with with the misses and and the, so all all bets are off and um, good on him for doing it. The other one that is slightly closer to us here is uh, Jason Dunstall as well. Uh, unbelievable career; it speaks for itself. I was having a chat on Wednesday morning with Marty Sheargold about. I reckon he's someone that could, if he got fit enough, transition into the modern game. Imagine the power that he would possess 
and not just as a full forward. Well, like he's a that forward size, mid. isn't he? He's that size. He's not like he wasn't. He's not tall. He's like, not massive. He's not I think he's one eighty eight. Yeah. He's so he's not overly tall, and if he got fit, he probably could be that hybrid. And it's hard to man, man yeah. up on. So, he's so powerful. Yeah. Oh, he's he's a solid unit too. Um, but kicking that many goals. Like looking back now, it's actually ridiculous how many goals they kicked. Kicked 140 something in a season. What did he kick? 15 goals, nine or something, one game. It's like his he's, super coach he's, points would have been through the roof. He's walked off with 24 possessions, all of them scores. And he's a forward. <laughs> yeah. Like you have to rely on other people to kick you the ball. So it's it's actually wild back in the day, those the amount of goals they kicked and how they did. And I reckon you're right. He's plugger. I reckon he, he might struggle with people dropping back in the hole and sort of manning up and like the defenders Plugger these days. Plugger apparently unbelievably skillful though, like field kicking left and or right. Yeah, well. Which was a, an anomaly back in that day. Definitely. When you sort of your opposite leg was but used I see, for balance. I see, I see Dunster was like, like you're right, that hybrid. He's hard to actually man up on. Like if you're a defender, you need to be quick, strong and not. Overly, if you were looking for a comparison, are we thinking like a J.H. Stringer? Or I reckon more he's more power, the more of a forward, yeah. So he's more of a stay at home forward. So he's because J.H. Stringer would go in the midfield, I wouldn't wouldn't think Dunster would go in the midfield. Um, but yeah, it's like 50, 60, 70 goals a year for thought, him <laughs> would be, and like he didn't miss that. Now. Was the yeah. Although you said 15, nine or whatever, but yeah, he yeah, missed he a had few. shots. He's got them from everywhere and it's probably muddy and stuff now. It wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't, be muddy, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be muddy now. That's for sure. Um, before we get into full preview mode after the break, which we'll be looking forward to tomorrow night's clash between the Cats and Carlton. And then we'll also look at the big derby between the Swans and the GWS Giants. Last week, you brought a segment to the table with a recommendation. Yep. This week, I have provided one for the listeners. Yep. What have we got? Clarkson's Farm. It is Jeremy Clarkson, famous I from... I thought you were talking about Alistair. <laughs> no. I thought you were going to Alistair. I'm like, what's his farm look like? <laughs> Clarkson, Jeremy Clarkson from... Um, yeah, Top Gear. Top Gear. has <laughs> Obviously, that show got resold. So now he's made a documentary about all this land he's bought, and he just takes up farming. And, and they the cameras follow him around as he does his best to do farming. So he's just like coattailing on the and back he of just his old like show. Went, and he's what? Just doing his normal day stuff. Went, to go, paid and, for it. went to go and buy a tractor. Came out with a Lamborghini tractor. <laughs> like just all this sort of stuff. Oh, so he's full piss take. Full, well, yeah, but also trying to farm. Trying to farm. Yeah. Anyway, you can find that uh, Google online. I'm not sure what service it is, but it's worth watching. Coming up after the break, we are, of course, a footy talk podcast. Also with recommendations now into pop culture and the like. Uh, we will be discussing the big games coming up this weekend. This is the footy talk podcast. Welcome back to the Footy Talk Podcast. This is your place for the latest news, interviews, and analysis from the world of AFL. And there is a big game going down tomorrow night at the MCG. It is Geelong taking on Carlton. Big, big game. Carlton currently sitting second on the ladder, equal with Collingwood. And the Cats precariously slotted in sixth, a game off. Second and third. If they lose this, they're right back, back in the back. muck. Yeah, it is. It's an interesting game, and it's again, it's a tipsters nightmare. Mm. This whole round, what team is going to rock up from Geelong? Both fresh off the bye, so I think Geelong get danger back. Yeah, I, I just is he the missing piece? Maybe because they just haven't been consistent enough the last sort of <laughs> four, five, six weeks. Hang on, hang on. Did you pose a question and answer it yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I look, was. It's is a, Jeremy it, Cameron going to start? Probably. <laughs> no, but you—you you actually, I didn't know he was playing. So, like, you posed the sort of the question. And I'm like, could he be like? Could he be the missing link? Could he be the one that like sort of rejuvenates them? And you know what? Marathon, not a sprint. The whole season. Are Geelong just tiptoeing through the mid season, and then they'll They've peak done towards this the second half? Yeah, they that's have what done I don't this know. before, and then they get on that back half run. I think they end up getting 15 or 16 games straight the year that they won it. Because they've got everything bar, like even the last month, bar a danger field mm. in the midfield that is one of the best teams going around. And a lot of Forward. players will say, a lot of people, I should say, would say one player doesn't make a difference. It does. Well, if he's, he's a pretty good player. Um, but you take one of your better midfielders out of any side, it becomes bare pretty quickly. 
Yeah. Oh, definitely. So it's it's an interesting game, and I think Carlton. I'm not sure. I'm not sold completely on them. Three and thirteen against Geelong, going all the way back to 2010. Probably a bit of a false economy though, because Carlton were crap throughout yeah. that year, and Ge- those years yeah. in Geelong were very good. And they're finding their way as well. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be a cracking game. And like you said, whoever loses goes back in the muck a little bit, which is dangerous because if you go on a little bit of a reverse run mm. with losers, losses in a row, then you go, you could, you're a chance to slide out of the eight because everyone's piling. The Hawks, we just made Will Day the player that he is and the team that they are. We got him in and said, Will, look, it's very off, simple. Off air, we'll explain how to play and how to get your team wins. He's listened and now... He wants to be captain. Yeah, they're five and one or something yeah. since we've spoken to him. We it, can't take all the credit, sense. but we probably should. I, I, I think he's my second favourite player in the competition, apart from Sam Taylor. Yes. Um, but he's slowly and very, very quickly getting towards that favourite player. Well, he did... A, I'm not sure if he gave you a follow on Instagram, but I got a follow for the other day and I oh, said... I didn't. This friendship has taken to new levels. Uh, the Cats and the... Blues did play in round seven. It was a 13-point win to Geelong on that night. Since that game, the Blues have gone four and two. The Cats have gone one and five. So they are horrifically out of form. The bye probably came at a good time. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, we've spoken about this. Geelong have, like, a plan for the whole year. Mm. Like, in the background, they're like, we're resting Hawkins this game no matter what. Yep. Jeremy Cameron gets suspended and or gets injured and is out, and Hawkins is getting rested that week. No matter Regardless. what, like there's like, yeah, we're locked that in. So, you know, this could be a plan for them and the way they go about things is good. And you know what? They can get on a run. They finish top two and then end up being second favourite for the premiership apart from the Swans. Very good point uh, of the Swans. Great segue. I appreciate you doing that. Saturday Twilight Footy is up at NG Stadium, the home of the GWS Giants, as they take on the rampaging City Swans, Heath. This is going to be a good game. If you're a Giants fan, which you are, are you nervous? Do you think the Swans will get a hold of them? I am I am nervous about this game. Um, I have spoken to a few of the Giants boys and I have said that it's not very often that the Swans get the Giants twice in a year, oh. like home and away. And I made a point of it saying that it's not on. Right. So I Line would in be the sand. very, I would, I would, I'd be very surprised if it, there isn't like some, a, a bit of fire in this game because on form, Swans win mm. and they win pretty comfortably, but there's a big but, and it's a bit of like, let's line in the sand stuff. Let's have a real crack here because it's time. And you know what I like about Adam Kingsley? I think he would recognize that and yes. he would see that. And he's a guy that, cause I look at all the coaches over the whole of the AFL and there's a couple of one, ones that I think would be able to motivate me. And he I looks like he could get that top lip, lip quivering as yeah. he sort of stares you scary. down and gives you a little bit of right. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll bite your head off. And I reckon, yeah, he might say that to, if, to a few of them. If that <laughs> is the way they go about it, it reeks of Toby Green having a big game. And he needs to. So Toby's like, you know what? He just hasn't been Toby-like. But I still think at times when you're – slightly out of form or people are questioning your form, you try too hard. Yep. Which and is I tough also when you're being the skipper as well. So you want to be selfless, but at times you have to and probably should be a touch more selfish with what you're doing yeah. on the field. I think he's trying too hard. Okay. Just go back and play. Are you going to ring him and tell him that? Just send him the no, link. No, just send him a text. Just send him the link on this one. Joel Lamarty is now <laughs> posing as a big threat which is words I probably didn't think I'd ever say. Kick nine goals. Again, words I never thought I would say. But he has stepped up. We all know the absence of Buddy Franklin, the hole that was left. The hole is filled, Heath. He is the plug. He's got Sally's all clear all around the outside. There is no leaks. Nine goals. Yeah. Nine goals is ridiculous. It's not easy. No. He's, um... You can luck into four or five. You can't luck into nine. <laughs> you can luck into four or five, you reckon? Well, I lucked into four a couple of times. <laughs> it's, Zach no, Williams it's, kicked four the other week. A good fan of the show. <laughs> it's, 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 it's true, but it is like he's – and confidence is key. And we spoke about the Hawks and confidence. Yep. Young kids with confidence. North Melbourne on the weekend. Dangerous. And he's confident now. So it's like now it goes from being a guy that's kicking, like you said, one or two accidentally – um, to he's kicked a bag of five or something yeah. earlier in the year, and it's like that confidence. Now you kick nine, and you're like, 
whatever. This is easy. Does the blanket go to him? Referencing Sam Taylor, if you just didn't quite follow along. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I knew who it was. As you looked into just, I just, don't, I just deep don't, out of podcast space. I just don't. I think so, yeah. You have to. You go to the guy in form. Yeah. Put him to sleep. That's easy done. There's so, nine goals you don't have to worry about. So a tip for both of those games? Oh, geez, that's a tough one. I'll, I'll, I'm going to go with Sydney, just purely on form, but I think it is a big danger, danger. Yeah, team. I'm a, on form Sydney, but Hart says GWS, so go GWS. And then... Um, I'm going to go opposite to what you just circled. I'm going to go Geelong. Well, I'm going to. I think they're the going to find they're going to find the. I think that, yeah. Again, the Blues got on the run back half of the season last year. It's going to be hard to do again. The Cats, I feel like you are just going to be primed and ready. I reckon Friday night footy is going to but be. But they a could. Just remember, a couple of weeks ago, Geelong v Sydney, mm-hmm. six goals to one first quarter. Yep, and then with half a side out. Then they just went to sleep. So and got beat by six goals. I know, but <laughs> that's what I mean. So the like the form is not that bad. No, and the season is as even as ever. Hey, if you're listening on Spotify, hit the bell so you can get notified when we drop a new episode. And check us out and get interactive on Instagram at Footy Talk underscore Pod. Hey, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you tonight for my birthday eve celebrations. Birthday Eve. We're doing birthday eves now. We're okay. doing birthday eves, birthday okay. boxing days, and also and then birthday and, and then, then birthday yeah, boxing days, the recovery, post, and then the recovery plus birthday like New Year's Eve. Like we won't worry too much about that. Thanks very much for joining us on Footy Talk. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend. See you back next Thursday.